Hey gang and welcome to your very first Gatsby tutorial. Alright then, so the first question we need to answer is, what is Gatsby? Well, Gatsby is pretty widely known as a static site generator, SSG for short, and we're going to see exactly what that means soon, but it's not just a static site generator, it's a complete front-end solution which kind of streamlines the process of making really fast, search engine friendly and secure websites, and it does that using modern technology like React and GraphQL. And in fact, Gatsby calls itself a modern site generator, so I think it's really trying to package itself as a complete front-end solution rather than just a static site generator. And it's trying to consolidate our front-end into one piece so that we don't have to worry too much about all of the different moving parts because, let's face it, front-end web development can be a minefield with all of the different moving parts involved. But first of all, let's talk about what a static site generator is because that is a huge part of what Gatsby is. So... In a nutshell, a static site generator is something that takes templates, components and data and it generates static HTML pages based on those things at build time. Now, to put that into context, I want to talk about the different types of websites that we can build. So, first of all, we could just make a static website and that would just be made of HTML pages which could also contain CSS and JavaScript. And we'd upload those to a CDN to host them on the web and then whenever we request one of those pages in a browser, it would return it to us. So for every new page that we want, we might make a new request for that page to the server and then it would send that new page back. Now, the problems with this approach is that, first of all, we might be rewriting a lot of the same HTML in each page. For example, the header, the footer, the sidebar, that would be the same code for every page and we'd be rewriting it in every HTML page. So if we were to make a change to one of those pages, to one of those parts, we'd have to update every HTML page manually which contain it. So it's going to be really hard to update or maintain. And another problem is that if you're making a fresh request to the server for every page you go to on the website, it makes the website a little slower. So this approach is good for SEO because the search engines can crawl our site and we're getting full rendered HTML pages back with content, but it's not great for speed because we're making that request every time we want a new page and it's not easy to update because like I said, we're rewriting some of the code in every single page. So the next type of website is a single page application or an SBA for short. And this would be a typical React or Vue website whereby we only need to make a single initial server request for a blank HTML page to be sent back to the browser. Then React or Vue or whatever you're using controls all of the content, pages and data fetching from the browser. So there's no extra requests to the server for other pages, which makes the website a bit faster than a traditional static site. And because a single page application is component driven, it means that updating something like a footer or a header, which is on every page, is easier. We just have to update that one single component instead of every page. But the problem with this is that our pages are not search engine optimized because we only ever get back a blank HTML page from the server. So there is that trade off. So in this case, SEO not so good, but speed better and it is easier to update as well. Now, another type of website is a server side rendered website or SSR for short. And this is where our HTML pages are built on the fly on the server after every page request. So the server will get any data for that page from a database or the source, pump that into a template file and then send back the resulting HTML file to the browser. Traditionally, this is how PHP websites work or maybe Node and Express websites which use a templating system like EJS. And this means that our site is search engine optimized because we get back a content rich HTML page back from the server on each request. And again, it also means that updating something like a header that appears on every page is easy because we're using a templating system on the server. But again, this option has drawbacks. Firstly, we still have to make a new request to the server for every single page. And secondly, to handle those requests on the server, the server often needs to query the data source, like a database, for the data on each page. And that slows the website down a bit. So although this is better for SEO and it is easy to update, we kind of take a little hit 
on speed. So it would be nice if we could take the advantages of each of these different approaches and bundle them together into one solution where we have good SEO, good speed, and it is easy to update. So this is where Gatsby and static site generation steps in. So static site generation is a process where our final HTML pages are compiled at build time, not on the server after each request, but at build time before we even deploy the application to the web. So we'd create our website on our computer using React components maybe for pages and other parts of content like headers or footers, a bit like we'd normally create a single page application with React. Then inside Gatsby, we could run a build command on our computer. It takes all of our React components, fetches any data that they need and pumps it into them, then spits out static HTML files for each page that we have, along with a JavaScript bundle too. Then we just deploy all of those HTML pages and JavaScript to a CDN to host. So it becomes a bit like a static site at this point where each page has its own ready-made HTML file. So once we've deployed this, we'd maybe request one of these pages from a browser and the server would send it right back pretty quickly since there's no server side rendering involved. It's all pre-rendered HTML at this point. Now, from this point on, once we have the page in the browser, the JavaScript bundle in that HTML page, also generated by Gatsby, would kick in and the website would behave much like a single page application, whereby routing is handled in the browser, which makes the website really quick, and it means no extra requests for other pages are sent to the server. The JavaScript just swaps out the content for different pages that we go to. Unlike a traditional single page application though, our site has better SEO because our initial request for a page sends back a content rich pre-rendered HTML file, whereas a typical single page application sends back a blank HTML file. So this process of using Gatsby to perform static site generation brings together all of the benefits of other types of websites that we talked about. It's good for SEO, it has good speed, and it's easy to update because we're using something like React. And the trade-offs are pretty small in comparison. So I definitely think SSG and Gatsby have huge roles to play in the future of front-end development. And incidentally, there are other static site generators that you can use as well, like Next.js or Nuxt. They try to do similar things, but also mix this in with server-side rendering too. But another big advantage of using Gatsby is the way that it handles different data sources for our application. So in our apps, we can use as many different data sources for the website, either on our computer or anywhere on the web. For example, we could have blog post data stored in WordPress or maybe some product data stored in Shopify. We might even have some data which comes from MongoDB or something like that. Gatsby can reach out to all of those at build time and normalize the data sources into a GraphQL layer by using source plugins. And that means that it doesn't matter where your data is loaded from, we can query it and access it the same way from our components, from our website, using GraphQL queries, which is really nice. Now, Gatsby calls this the content mesh, whereby different data sources can be meshed together in one unified GraphQL layer. So in this tutorial series, I'm gonna show you how to create a Gatsby website from scratch like this. It's a simple portfolio website called Web Warrior, which incidentally I was gonna call my channel before I thought of NetNinja, so thank God I thought of that because I think this is a bit cheesy. But anyway, it's a simple portfolio site and I'm gonna show you all the different tools that Gatsby gives us along the way that helps us to create these kinds of sites and why it's a good option to create content-driven websites. Now, before you start this series, however, I would suggest that you already have at least a basic to good understanding of React because we use React to make Gatsby websites. So if you're brand new to React, definitely check out this tutorial series. First of all, on my channel, Full Modern React Tutorial. The link to this is gonna be down below, then come back and try Gatsby. Also, you'll need a couple of things installed on your computer. First of all, Node.js, which you can download at nodejs.org. And this is so that we can install Gatsby on our computer and also any other packages that we need. And you'll need to install Git, which you can get at git-scm.com forward slash downloads. The link to this will be down below and you can download it right here. And we need this because Gatsby uses this behind the scenes when we start to work with starter projects. 
Now finally, because I'm a super ninja, I've created course files for every single lesson in this series and you can find them at this repo on GitHub. It's called Gatsby Tutorial. The link to this is going to be down below. Now every different lesson has different code, so each lesson has its own branch. So if you want to see the code for lesson 6, for example, you'd select the lesson 6 branch right here and you're going to see all the code for that lesson right here. So there we go, my friends. That is your introduction to Gatsby and what it can do for us. In the next video, we're going to start by setting up a new Gatsby project.